Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Compact Claustrophobia. Before we begin today, I have a little bit of an announcement. Starting with August, I will be going on vacation with my lovely girlfriend for two weeks. And in that time, I will reduce the amount of videos we have per week. Uh, normally, there's five videos, one each day. And I will also reduce videos this coming week. So today I'm recording, it's Monday. And I will have a video today and possibly Wednesday and Friday. And I will not have a video on Tuesday and Thursday because I want to stock up on a few videos so I can at least release them while I'm gone. So you're not without content at all. And after I come back on vacation, we're going to be back on full speed video production system going on forward. <laughs> Something like that. Any hoozle, so we're going to start off today by taking some igneous extruders and giving them some water and some lava and we're going to make granite, diorite, and andesite. And we're going to then take those three materials and put them through rock crushers so we can get ourselves a bunch of this, all of these things. And I don't know exactly how I'm going to store these, possibly just in the storage system since we have so much room it should be fine. And we can just set the detector up top on the main ingredient that we need from all of these. Like, for example, zirconium dust is the main thing that we need from diorite, not the crushed fluorite or the crushed carobibite. Carobibite. So, basically, we'll figure out how we'll set the detectors and how we're going to store all of the things. And there we go. We have a thousand of diorite, granite, and andesite all the time. And over here, I have them working with eight speed upgrades and eight energy upgrades. I think it's fast enough. I have this set to make a thousand of each, which might take a while for the uh, diorite because the diorite produces a small output of zirconium, which is the thing that's used to make zirconium ingots that is used to make universal bins and helium collectors. But... I had a wonderful idea of how I want to store the rest of the things. I kind of wanted them to be just tossed inside of the storage system with an importer here from the strong box, but I had a better idea. We can just pump them into a tiny compact machine, right? And we can have caches in there storing them, which is much, much simpler. And we can fit it here or here, it doesn't matter. So inside, we're just going to put down one, two, three, one, two, three. It has to, it can be super small. We're going to grab a tunnel here. Just one of them, there we go. And all we need is this to be on the down. And then we need external storages like this and like this and a simple cable here in between. And I will add all of the things to the caches. I have to go grab them out of here, get it hooked up and that should be pretty much good. I don't know why I always try to stick everything in tiny compact machines because small ones just are easy to make and have a little bit more space. So I can even add a nullifier and have it look semi-decent inside and we have stored space for more random things if we make something that we just need to store in the system and not ever use pretty much but that way we don't have to void anything or fill up our storage disk with numerous amounts of items that we're never going to use and this way we just store them on caches and i even upgraded them to signalum ones just so they never fill up pretty much um or if they do they get nullified anyway so it really doesn't matter I have added a couple of redstone furnaces to cook the corresponding dust into the ingot form and we're going to keep a thousand in the system like I do for everything else. And the real main reason that we needed these rock crushers and igneous extruders is actually this crush rodoso rodo crow site. And this is used to make crystal binder which is used to make elite plating which is used to make the fusion core. So we can get ourselves a fusion reactor, which is what we need to create glowstone so we can actually progress further in the quest line. And to get this crystal binder, we need one more solution, which is calcium sulfate. And that has a slew of things that we need to make. We basically need to melt sulfur, mix it with oxygen to get sulfur dioxide, and then mix it with oxygen again to get sulfur trioxide, and then we mix that and I believe uh, water to get sulfuric acid, uh, which is right here. And then we also need fluoride water, which is just the crushed fluoride that we're getting from the rock crushers in the back there, uh, mixed with water to get fluoride water. And I'm gonna see if we have enough space in here to get all of that set up. I have four slots for machines. 
and we need oxygen constantly in the system and I don't know if we set this guy to be controlled by oxygen if that's gonna break our hydrogen solution thing because we probably need to keep hydrogen in the system at all times but as you can see it produced way more than what we needed uh, by just making the stuff because I believe this guy makes hydrogen back and we could potentially just set this guy to be controlled on oxygen because we currently have zero belly buckets inside the system and that way we produce enough oxygen to run our machines over here I was not home for the weekend, and in that time, I forgot what I said in the last episode, that we're gonna change all of the cables around to be the better version of cables, and then we can just transfer everything around on a single cable, which is gonna make things much, much more efficient. So we're gonna go do that shortly. The thing that I wanna do next is set up my electrolyzers. I have two of them set up over here. I want to have two because one we can control for oxygen and the other we can control for hydrogen and we can even produce the oxygen and hydrogen faster than we're using it because currently I believe this guy is using oxygen fairly quickly to make blizz rods which I decided to make a thousand of each in between episodes just so we can have a lot of it in the system and basically they have power coming in from the back for each one of these because they use 2600 RF per tick with full upgrades and this cable can only do 4000 so it's not enough and as far as the detection goes we're gonna use a NAND gate here which if you shift right click you can change the modes on basically so we're gonna set it so we have to have an input on the left and on the right for this redstone line to turn off and here we're gonna set this to fluids and emit when under the amount of let's say 300,000 of hydrogen which is 320 buckets is the maximum amount of this in here, this portable tank. So 300,000 should be plenty. And we leave a little bit of wiggle room that way. And this one is going to be set to fluids, emit when signals under the amount of 300,000 of oxygen. So this guy is constantly going to emit a signal because we currently are out of oxygen. But once this finishes, it should start backing up a little bit. And as soon as the oxygen fills up, this both turns off and it turns off this exporter and this exporter to stop exporting water. And that should be a completed electrolyzer system. So now we can tackle our ducts and that is gonna be made with some cryothium dust in the magma crucible. And then I have some cryostabilized flux duct for which the recipe is just some resonant flux duct, some hardened glass and some electrum. And that turns into cryostabilized flux duct. So I'll just wait for this entire stack to be made, which should be enough for us to replace the ones in our main compact machine and also next to the reactor. We're gonna start off here by our reactor. I assume that this reactor port can emit uh, an infinite amount. So we can basically tear this guy down that we don't need here on this side. And we can then just fill this in with compact machine walls and a casing as well. Casing. I think I have another one. Yep. There we go. And we can put in the cryostabilized duct and then the fission reactor port and that should emit enough power for us to power this. So this is going to be turned off here on one side and we can just remove this guy and we're going to put it the tunnel that is going to connect to the place right over here on the other side. So that is a gnallon flux duct. We can do that and you are not connecting did I not add a tunnel? I did add a tunnel, it's just on the wrong side. Up, north, south, west. Not that. <laughs> this. Are we done? We're connected. Nice. It says zero RF. I don't know if it's working. Okay, we can just see it here in the signal and flux duct. It's full on power, so it should be fine. And if I put this guy here, it doesn't look like it's full on power but you can see these guys are draining and it's not providing power maybe if I replace this and go out are you now providing power you are okay so it just doesn't show in the cryo stabilized flux duct but otherwise it's okay the more nuclear craft machines we use the more speed upgrades and energy upgrades we need and these require crushed quartz and I'm gonna set it up over here. Well, I already did. So as soon as we flip this, we should have uh, the crushed quartz in the system. And if I wanna make a 
a stack of upgrades. I think I need 256 of this. Yeah, we're missing 80, so I'm just gonna wait. This pulverizer is maxed out, so it's gonna produce it as fast as it possibly can. And once we have a stack, we can progress towards getting ourselves some calcium sulfate. So we have the sulfur already done. The oxygen is now finally backing up in the system. Uh, now that we have the two electrolyzer working hand in hand. And this guy is making sulfur dioxide, which we're gonna grab with a bucket, like so. And we can then add a portable tank here. We're gonna grab some conversion kits, which I have right here. Boom. We're gonna add a simple filter right on top here. And we're gonna whitelist sulfur dioxide. And then we can flip this guy over. Seriously, where is this rain coming from? Weather is off. I have no idea. <laughs> Anywho, so fluids, and you can see. See what I have. See what happens. We have an importer for water, right? And as soon as we do something like that, and we don't have anything in the system, uh, we um, we need a whitelist here. <laughs> Otherwise, that happens. So I need to grab a nullifier so we can get rid of this water here. Just gonna stick you here in somewhere. Doesn't really matter. And we're gonna grab this guy and we can then just right click, empty it out. And that way we don't get water. And here we also need a servo right on top of it. And we can say extract always active. And we should be seeing sulfur dioxide going into here. Maybe possibly because this is an item duct and not a fluid duct, <laughs> that might also help. Uh, so we can add that. We can add the servo. And you should be heading into here now. Yep. Okay. And we can add a filter like we had before with a whitelist of sulfur dioxide. Okay. So next we need a second chemical reactor, which is going to take the sulfur dioxide. We flip this guy to the right spot. You're going to take sulfur dioxide with fluids and oxygen as well. And you're going to turn that into sulfur trioxide. And I think now we can make some upgrades. Seriously, Rain, I might just turn off friggin' sounds if that's going to be a thing. Um, I don't understand. Maybe I'll ask into Discord why we have thunderstorms going on outside of compact machines, which is really weird. Anyway, this makes sulfur trioxide, which I'm going to grab another tank for. And we're going to get that hooked up as well. I'm pretty much going to fit in everything on this wall. And the reason for that is because we need a nullifier here in the corner and I have this corner filled up. This guy is my cable and the other option would be here, but I have all of the fluid conduits here so we can fluid ducts, I should say over here. So we should be fine on setting it over here. And the reason is, is as soon as we make the sulfuric acid mix with fluoride water, I believe, uh, I think is that what that is what you do. No, yeah, yeah, we need fluoride water and sulfuric acid. So this should fill up and output the fluoride water as well. No? Oh, right. Uh, I know why. This was why. And you're set up. Okay. Fluoride water. Oh, it's incredibly slow. Get eight upgrades, please. Maybe even 16. Because these don't generally use a lot of power yet. Yeah, it's 85. Let's have 24 upgrades in. So that makes hydrofluoric acid and a little bit of calcium sulfate solution. And the hydrofluoric acid, we don't really need to use at all. So can we set up a thing? Ooh, we can do, we can just do this, void excess, right? And that it should just make calcium sulfate solution. And we can even set up this to not output on the bottom. Oh, that's so much more simple to do than we adding us nullifiers. I totally forgot they have this functionality. So this will just void the excess of hydrofluoric acid. Yep, it's going to be filled up and it's going to fill up on calcium sulfate solution. We can so much easily clean up the other rooms as well in here and not in here really, but in in where the this guy here, we can clean up this so much better because the electrolyzer produced deuterium. And as soon as the deuterium tank is full, we need to void it. And we can just set up here to void excess as soon as this fills up and the hydrogen fills up and the oxygen fills up. And we then have, we wouldn't really need those things to do um, anything. But um, yeah, that's an easier solution to void the excess amount that it makes. 
The whole avoiding thing is not gonna work here because if I remove anything from this nullifier filter, the duct will fill up with, let's say, hydrogen, which won't have a place to go here because it will get extracted by the servo. We would need to have some sort of other way where we could extract it on three different lines and it would be a whole lot of a complication. But eventually, once we can get ourselves on the fluid conduits, and especially the ender fluid conduits, which allow multiple fluids to be transported on the same line, we can just replace this with that, and that way we can pretty much extract everything with priorities going to the corresponding tank, and the rest will just get voided, because the conduit will not over-extract if it sees that it can't go in here, kind of like the, the fluid duct does, because it's kind of a dum-dum, and it says like, ooh, we can put stuff in the hydrogen gas tank, but actually you can't, so just the duct fills up. That way, the nullifier comes in with the filter to remove the said liquid from the duct, which is okay. And in here, we now have calcium sulfate coming in into the system, and we can now come over to our main system, and we can grab ourselves, let's say, the fusion, fusion reactor, if I can type at all. There we go, it's also called just the fusion core. We can set up a recipe for that. <clears throat> oh, that actually requires two chemical reactors. Okay. Uh, and we can then set up a recipe for elite plating and we can set up a recipe for the crystal binder Which I think we should have everything in the system and we can toss all of those in there. Did I set up a recipe for these? Magnesium I did okay, so we can now see fusion core Can I make you? We're missing 4 du plating and missing 8 calcium sulfate. Did I not I might have not flipped the Yep Okay, we now have calcium sulfate. <laughs> okay, so the other plating is this guy, DU, which is uranium-238 at sulfur. And I think we have uranium-238s. Yes, we do. Okay, that's simple enough to do. So we can just do something like this. Boom. And then uh, core. Can I make you now? Can. Aha, it's done. Fusion core. Star in a box. And the next thing we need is electro, electro magnets. <clears throat> and I think we need these guys. So those are just going to be the copper solenoids and advanced plating. I think I have all of those in the system. So electromagnet. Uh, it takes a moment for the recipe to show up. We need a stack, I believe. Ooh, we're missing tough alloy. We're missing 25. We have 999 available. Okay. Um, here. I think tough alloy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, be be a better tough alloy and give me two thousand of it, please. Thank you very much. And I will wait until we can make enough electromagnets. There we go. We could actually just set it to a thousand and twenty-four, <laughs> but uh, we're probably never gonna need to craft electromagnets. Uh, well, we might if we set up a secondary fusion reactor, because I think we're gonna need two, possibly. But as soon as we get a stack here. We can extract those out and quests. Unlimited dimensions. Power of the sun complete. We get 32 fusion reactor electromagnets here. And now we can make a neutron irradiator. Irradiator. Neutron irradiator. I think I have everything in the patterns that we can do this. Also, cleaning of the inventory is way necessary because all of the things need to go away. Boom. Better? Okay. Irradiator. Probably double R. There we go. Make me one, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I can now make a fluid transposer, apparently. Because uh, <laughs> I couldn't before, you know. There we go. Uh, bliss powder. Blah, blah. Give me one of those and one of those. Okay, fluid infuser. I just made that here. Okay, blaze rod. There we go. Cryothium dust. Completing all of the quests. There we go. And now I need energized glowstone, which is going to require us to have neutron fluid which is going to require us to have fusion reactor. And I don't know what is the best way to do the fusion reactor, but I think you can put in, I believe, hydrogen 
and hydrogen and you get a base of deuterium and then you can put in deuterium into a reactor two of those and you can get a byproduct of neutron fluid uh, and I don't know if it's best to do deuterium plus something else uh, in the reactor or we can just do this and get us back a bit of hydrogen tritium and helium I think it might be best if I tackle the fusion reactor in the next episode and I will have some time in between possibly to fiddle around with how it's gonna work and what items are we, we are gonna need or fluids for that matter and we can now get into a maximum compact machine because we have this set up over here and if I copy this pretty much except with the compact machine walls and stuff we can set up two miniaturization fields here and one up top here one is gonna make us the compact machine walls and the other one is gonna make us the normal compact machine I think that sounds like a good idea we have the room with compact machine walls automation pretty much set up, but I need a couple of filters and specifically this power item filter, which requires a conduit probe, which requires grains of infinity. And I have not shown you how you get those, but it's basically lighting up the bedrock in over the overworld to get grains of infinity. There's like a 50% chance. Yeah, there we go. We got one. So I need to do this a little bit more uh, until I get a couple more. I think I need four for another room. Here is the system for making compact machine walls. It's kind of on the same basis, just a different wiring setup. And I kind of want to move this dropper a little bit because we can squeeze in another setup over here to make the normal compact machines. And I think we can place a dropper facing upwards and that will toss an item into this slot. And this guy can face downwards like it has to drop the redstone down. I think that might work really well. And over here, this is exactly the same as it was before. So we have the filter, 75% filter, 100%, and that's pretty much it. And then the redstone here is just a tiny bit different, so it fits into the corner. We have a repeater on two ticks, which triggers this redstone torch. Uh, if it's on one tick, the torch doesn't get turned off. And here we have a repeater that has a little bit more delay, and it goes into this structural duct that triggers this redstone relay, which is an input and this guy that is an output, so it drops a piece of redstone in here. And I have this set to a thousand compact machine walls, so I just wanna grab a little bit out so you can see how this is gonna work. It should trigger right now, yeah, the timer's going. So that should do the thing, and you can see it happen. Boom, places that, drops a redstone, converts it into compact machine walls. This guy picks it up, importer imports it, and exporter keeps a stock of iron and redstone in this strong box and that's pretty much the entire system and it's re working really well and cool so on the top part we're gonna just copy the exact same thing that we have on the downstairs here and uh, set up a machine that is gonna use compact machine walls a block of gold to make normal compact machines because then we can just set this to keep like a hundred or something in the system and we can use those to make the maximum compact machine I think we can utilize the system over here to do the pickup and to do the item distribution because we can just bind this guy to this strong box as well. And what we can do is this guy is with redstone mode for the moment, so it doesn't export anything in here. We can grab something that will never, never get put in here, like stone bricks, for example. And we can add here stone bricks like this. And here we're going to add the gold blocks and the compact machine walls like that. They're kind of split. We can even put like redstone and iron right here. And then we can put the compact machine wall and the gold blocks right there on that side. There we go. So that should prevent anything else going in here. And we can do something like this, add that and add that. And we can say work ignore redstone signal. And I currently don't have a recipe for gold blocks in the system, which we're gonna add in a moment. <clears throat> But if that guy is linked, uh, we need to then test out this guy to see if it places in the center. And what I'm gonna do actually is we're just gonna grab a compact machine wall. We're gonna put you right here. We're gonna select this guy to be copy. And then we're gonna copy this, just this like so. And then we can do a paste. And you can see how I test this out. So over here, we're gonna probably just grab the same conduit that is coming from downstairs and we're gonna put it right like this hooking up into this guy we can then head on downstairs 
and hook it up fully like so so we have full-on power in this guy we can then delete this and you see where that guy placed i think it placed over there uh let's give you like a speed of uh eight and you are right click so it's currently not placing anywhere i don't think so what i need to do is i need to flip you so you face the wall or something and then it starts working I just try and flip it and then you can see sometimes it places it, that's just the testing process of this all right i figured it out you have to face it into the back wall and then it places a block and what we can then do is just grab this even though it's showing i think to place it in the middle uh let's give you a floor to place on as well like this to show oh it's showing over here to the left so we need to do g edit placement and go negative on that and then plus one on that and then do okay i think oh it placed over here okay so we need to adjust you what by one more block so g at a placement we need to go one more that way and we can toss you in here and we should be having a block over there cool okay so now I can set up the three by three machine and place it over here in the middle and copy it over. And one thing that I just realized, the redstone servos do have a coloring system. So we can have both of them coming on the same line and we can then just power that block and power it through the bottom through the redstone servo. And this guy is set on red. So we're gonna set this guy to be green, for example. So it should only power this guy from the bottom, which is all set on red. And here we can keep a green line to power all of this stuff on top. Well, this becomes much cleaner when you have a floor and you can pretty much hide everything inside of that floor. So we have the structural duct coming in from the middle and it's set up the same way it was before. And I have this repeater triggering the torch and this repeater with this red alloy wire triggering this structural duct, which is triggering the dropper a little bit later. So you can see this in action. The timer is going to tick and I can shave off a few seconds off of the time. Going to create the thing, start a crafting and we can even do maybe two seconds less. Should be okay. And now we need to add a detector right here, which we're going to hook up to a cable right down here. So we're going to go kind of like this and we can go underneath so we can hide the cabling. And this guy we're going to set to emit a signal when under the amount of Let's say, how many do we need to make? Oh God, it was 24 for the large one and we need six times 24. So that's 120, 144, I think. So let's do 144. I'll do the math again, but I think it should be fine. So emit a signal when we're over the amount. There we go. So that should do its thing. Now, all we have to do is wait until we get 144 normal compact machine, and then we can turn those into the next tier of the compact machine, which we need to do the whole thing with the melter and turning that into the ingot former to get normal machine pieces. Then we can make large compact machines. And once we can get enough large compact machines that we can put them through the pressure poop injector to get glitched large machines, we can make three more of these giant actually no we need more than three of those giant ones because we need six total giant compact machines so we can make a maximum compact machine and once we have one of those we can then automatically craft with a five by five by five in the maximum compact machine uh simply by doing this and just one glitch giant machine and not six total so that is going to significantly decrease the amount of normal compact machines we need to keep in the system Plus we can then, in the multi-block miniaturization here, we can make all of these with just diamond blocks and 98 compact machine walls and make a giant compact machine instead of having to go through all of that process. So essentially at some point, I think we can then turn this guy off. We just needed to make 144 compact machines for us and then this will pretty much become obsolete because we can use the five by five miniaturization station thing and we can set it up which could be a really cool idea to keep, let's say, five small compact machines, five normal compact machines, five those compact machines, and five those compact machines inside of the system at all times. And that way I never have to worry about crafting compact machines again. That could be a pretty cool idea. 
But all of that is going to have to wait until next episode. And until then, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm really hoping you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button. You can also subscribe if you want to get notified of when a new video goes live. You can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.